Hello, in this video, we're going to try and explain grade boundaries for IGCSE and O-level computer science and try and work out what grade you might have got in this year's exam paper. Okay, so grade thresholds explained. What are grade thresholds? Grade thresholds are the minimum number of marks you need to get a certain grade in an exam. The exam board sets these thresholds after each exam series. Now remember, for IGCSE and O-level, you generally sit in two papers both worth 75 marks, so out of a total 150 marks is what we're looking at. How do we set grade thresholds? After the exams are marked, they decide, the exam board decide, the minimum marks needed for each grade. If an exam is harder than the previous one, they lower the thresholds. If it is easier, they raise them. This makes sure it's equally fair each year. Certainly when we had COVID, there was a fluctuation, and I'll try and show you that. Understanding grade threshold tables. The tables on the next slide, on the next screen, show the minimum marks needed for each grade in different exam papers. Sometimes marks are added for, from different papers to set the grade threshold for the whole subject. Okay, so looking at the key points, if an exam has multiple papers, they might use a weighting factor based on the syllabus. For high grades, you don't always need to get that particular grade in every paper, just overall. So if you get a low mark on paper two, but a really high mark on paper one, then these grades are added together. The A star grade is set by comparing the A and the B thresholds. And for AS levels, the marks are adjusted to ensure fairness for students in different countries. Okay, so we're looking at March 2024. This is for the 0478 computer science syllabus. And I'm looking at um, component paper one, component paper two. Okay, both 75 marks. Now, if you were to get over 45 marks in paper one and over 52 marks in paper two, we'd be looking at a grade um, grade A. Okay, so you can see this below. I've taken the AY option. There's A, X, A, Y, and A, Z, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, there's six different time zones for the exam papers. If somebody sits an exam, say, in Australia in the morning, and then somebody sits the same exam in the morning on the same day, in America, obviously there's a massive time difference and somebody in Australia could ring their friend in America and say, hello, here are all, all the answers to the questions. So different papers are for different time zones, basically. So here we go. What have we done? We've taken these raw marks. This is before they've been added together. Okay. But then we're going to combine component one and component two, basically paper one and paper two, and we're going to mark the grade out of 150 basically both papers added together. Okay, to get the A star, the levels are adjusted, and it's generally around about 20 marks, the difference. It's quite a high jump between the A and the A star. Okay, but as you can see, it doesn't really matter where you got the marks from, okay, as long as you just got 180 marks in a combination of paper one and paper two. Yeah, obviously the further down you go, yeah, the lower your mark is going to be. Okay, and just to, just to recap on that, A, X, A, Y, and A, Z. On grade boundary documents, A, X, A, Y, and A, Z typically refer to different versions of variants of the exam paper. These codes are used to identify which specific paper a student took, as exams can vary slightly to account for different regions or sessions. Yeah, so we're on the 0478 paper, October, November 2023 here, and um, it's a 1-2, okay, 1-2, which generally is um, A, Y. These versions are designed to ensure fairness and consistency, as we've mentioned before. Okay, so I'm going to combine both grades of paper one and paper two, and I'm looking back right up to November 2022, whereby we were on the old syllabus. Okay, remember the syllabus is which we're currently on runs from 2023 all the way up to 2025. Okay, so you can see here during COVID times, or taking into account COVID. Yeah, grades were a little bit lower. So there may have been some adjustments there based on the grades. Yeah, out of 150, you only needed a 105 to get an A star in the combined papers back in November 2023. But in March 2024, you needed 118, a, a further nine marks. And certainly a further nine marks compared with the November paper or compared with, sorry, a, a further, further 13 marks compared with November a further nine marks compared with the previous year, March 2023. So that's what we're looking at there. So A stars, yeah, anywhere between, if we were to, if we were to say realistically between 110 and 120, I think 
would be it would be a, in a good position to be getting that A star. Okay, when we combine both papers one and two together. Here we go. I've put I've separated these out. March 2024, November 2023, June 2023, and March 2023. And you can see what the raw marks were when we were getting the A grade. Okay, so adding both of those together, remember 97, 88, 87, and 93 down here. So let's have a little look at this. So combine the two, 97 out of 150 is 65% here to get an A. Um, 59% in November to get an A, 58% in June to get a, to get an A, and 62% right down here, look, 93 out of 150, 62% to get an A on that particular paper. So these seem quite low, but if we sort of take into account the A star, yeah, 77%, March, 73, 72, and 76, okay? So, yeah, looking at last year's June 2023 paper, the one that people will generally be sitting um, this year, or depending on what, what time you watch this, June 2024, realistically, we're looking around about that figure. I would say, as I said before, somewhere between 110 and 120 to guarantee yourself an A star, but that's quite a tall order. Yeah, Generally, I would say if you're over 75%, you should be safe. And that's it. So good luck. Fingers crossed for your results. Let me know what your marks were, and we can compare this with the latest grade boundary data that gets published. Okay, thank you for watching. Good luck, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.